Hi everybody, my name is Patricia Oud. I'm from the University of Guanajuato and I will present reflective practice as a collective experience, a case study from ESL teachers in Guanajuato. The research objectives um, were to analyze teaching practices in a collectivity listen and question for reflection and reflexivity, explore answers to puzzling issues, share lived experiences with other ESL teachers, develop communities of practice, and look at the effects of the process on teachers' beliefs. So this was a project with um, a group of researchers um, the literature review. We're going to look at the dichotomy between theory and practice, which is usually um, the reason why we do reflective practice, because there is a gap between what's really happening in the classroom, the applied knowledge, and the theoretical knowledge of what we know um, the academic training that we have, but there's something happening where there's not a clear understanding between what's happening in practice. So we do different types of reflection. Um, we use reflection on, in, and for action. So after teaching practices, after actions have occurred in the classroom, then while teaching during our practice, what's happening, um, we'd also use the, the reflective practice at that moment and before teaching to plan for future actions, um, which is planning forward and to guide our future um, decisions in the classroom. For this research, we start from a bottom-up approach, and so that means it's not imposed or mandated. It's teacher-initiated professional development. It fosters uh, teacher autonomy. We work from lived um, teaching situation, what is really happening. It promotes engagement with experience and we work with co-constructing knowledge in practice. We also use metacognitive posture, which means uh, we step back to critically examine what's happening in our practice and we analyze both individually and collectivity, collectively what is going on. The theoretical concept for the collective accompaniment model that we use that was created by Gilmet in 2014, it's based on accompaniment, which is joining with the other and offering support. We work with adjustment, which is uh, transforming actions in our practice professional context. We analyze what is happening in our practice and we use reflection and reflexivity, which is an inquiry on practice, to, um, to look at what's happening in our professional context. The methodology for the research is a qualitative met methodology. We also, um, part of the project uses quantitative methodology, but today I'm presenting the qualitative. Um, the data is analyzed using qualitative data. We work from interpreting narratives from uh, teachers' um, experiences. And we also triangulate for validity. We use different uh, data collection tools to be able to, to see what, uh, if, if we have the same type of results in different, with different uh, instruments. So <clears throat> this is a participatory action research. Uh, the participants 
we are trying to understand a social phenomena. The participants are co-researchers because they apply an action research in their teaching context. There is no generalization of results. You will see this is all very, very um, individualized context and unique. Um, we focus on change and action in a group. Okay, so this is why it's an action research. It's a participatory process concerned with developing practical um, pursuit of worthwhile human purposes. Okay. Data collection tools, we had seven, seven different tools. Uh, one is the RepGrid interview, which my colleague Ken Richter has explained in a video that is also part of this, um, this um, group of, um, of presentations for today. Um, there's uh, RepGrid interviews at the beginning and at the end of the process where we look at teachers' beliefs. There is a professional intervention project, which is shared verbally by different participants during the sessions that we carry on. Um, there is a 24-hour reflective report sent by, one, by the presenter the day after the presentation is done a collective introspection report and an individual introspection report right after the session, on the day of the session, and the researcher's journal. The participants were 10 practicing EFL teachers in Guanajuato. We are presenting today one professional intervention project from one of the participants. It went on over eight months and it was a bi-monthly sessions online during the pandemic. This was the first time that this um, model was uh, carried on online for um, the type of research that we carry uh, in Guanajuato. And um, it's carried on with di uh, different uh, graduate or students in the last year of the BA program in the Licenciatura in la Enseñanza del Inglés. This is the collective accompaniment model, which I have explained before. Um, it's been explained at the FEL, so I will not go on with uh, every step of the process, but in the results that I'm presenting today, you will be able to see and distinguish the different phases of the model. Okay, We're going to look at the realization phase where we question and observe, where we analyze and reflect, when we plan for actions, where um, we're also going to look at the introspection phase collectively and individually in this process. So in terms of results, so for this presentation today, it, we are presenting one participant's situation, one session of the CAM. Uh, the participant says, I have noticed that my classes sometimes are too much teacher-centered. Well, we use the team platform, but they are, not, they are not too many. But sometimes what I've seen or what I have noticed is that I am the only one talking in the class. Um, sometimes for them, I don't know if they don't want to participate. I don't know if they feel insecure about their English because, well, the first graders, they are like basic level. They are A1. So sometimes the same ones are participating. I really try to call their names so they can, so that they can everybody participate. I mean, they're not like 50 or 30. It's easy to make them participate, but sometimes like, oh, my microphone doesn't work or I don't even see them. Sometimes they may be even ghost in there. I believe that they just turn the session and they don't, they aren't even there. I don't know if that's the problem. I mean, I mean, there's a lot, there's a lot of things. At the end, I found myself like talking and talking and like 
Yes, ghost, are you there? Are you here with us? So this is what the... Ch the so participant four in the group um, then is asking a question to the presenter. Uh, participant four says, did those groups or those students start kind of eventually decreasing their participation levels? Or was it the same since the beginning of the school year? Or I don't know if you noticed any difference. So the other participants in the room, in the group, are allowed to ask questions for reflection and reflexivity to the, pr the person presenting that day. Another participant says, I have a question about the warm-up activities. You said that sometimes the students are very participative. You don't know what happens, why some days you don't know if it's the time of the class or the day of the class, or you don't know what's affecting their participation, right? I think this was participant five that says something about the first 60 seconds of the class that she has noticed that makes a big difference in the engagement of the students right from the beginning of the class. Is there any kind of warm-up activities that would help engage the students right from the beginning that has worked for you or that you or that you can think of? Okay, so questioning is then happening. It's, um, it's going on around the table during the CAM model. And this whole process can last over easily over an hour, an hour and a half. And towards the end of the session, we start asking the presenter to look for an action plan, to develop an action plan for their action research. So um, the action plan from, from the participant who presented that day um, looks like this. I think for most of what you said or my actions to implement, I have to create and, may, and be more aware of the warm-ups that I select for the classes and see if these affect or not the entire class. Continue creating or add more creative activities for, to the class we can work with the book, but also different. I'm really glad many of you shared your ideas because it opened my mind a lot. I'm going to also implement the ones that more groups, team, teamwork, teamwork, so students can also help each other. And I'm not the only one in responsible, the one responsible of them. Make them participate more, in that way so they can also talk with them and not just listening to my part and have moments for them too and show how they feel make them feel make them know make them aware of how much they have worked so this is part of the action plan that the teacher is presenting uh, during the session at the end of the session then we go into collective introspection. At the end, the whole group can share. People are invited to share their introspection from the session that day. So participant five says, this session I've been thinking. For now, I'm interested in this silent period because we, we sometimes not, are not very patient. We feel that if, or we're afraid of those silent moments and they're not wasting our time if we perceive it as that. But it is important because sometimes they need to process what they're listening to and they need to understand. So obviously this is also an ESL teacher that is reflecting on how the session affected her in her practice for her classes. The participant says, participant three, I also feel so happy today ending this session because at the beginning it was difficult for for me even to ask trying to ask like useful questions that we are not judging 
And I think that's something that I have learned also here among, among many other things. I also go this time very, very happy because we share our situations. Even we don't share context. We work in different schools, in different, different contexts, but we share experiences because I hear you or I hear someone else, somebody else and I say, oh, it has happened to me once or twice and that I think it's very rich. So <clears throat> this is one of the results from the, the collective accompaniment session from the presentation of one of the participants on the other members around the table. At the end of the session, the participants all uh, do an individual introspection. It's uh, a questionnaire, it's a form, and they answer different questions. And the participant who presented that day says that the most important reflective moment in today's session was identifying the type of activity and methodology I'm using in my classes and check students' responses to them. Um, the specific interactions and comments that guided the reflection for her was what type of warm-ups are you doing? Have you tried to do certain activities as warm-ups and check students' behavior through the class. And an another important information learned during the session is about the silent period. I forgot about that stage and I feel obligated to listen and check students' responses without having in mind they are all at different and they are all different and their progress will show according to each student. The 24 hour report is sent at the end. It's, um, it's actually sent the day after the actual session. So the person who presented that day sent the report the next day. And in the report, um, this teacher is talking about reflecting on teaching practices and that it was focused on teacher center but then she says, the more we were talking and analyzing in the CAM session, I was able to identify that the problem was not about teacher center. It was more focused about on the dynamic of the class. Maybe the classes were not attractive enough to, our, to, my, to students or they were too repetitive. Thanks to the reflection, I could create an action plan I can implement for the following classes in order to improve my teaching practice. And this is the, the, the actual um, uh, action plan that this teacher developed. So the action, the, the plan includes five elements, the warm-ups, the activities, the students, group activities, and appreciation. So, through the session, through the questioning, through the verbal uh, narrative that was shared with the rest of the group, this teacher was able to elaborate this action plan. Uh, we are still in process, so this action research will be documented and will continue to evolve. In terms of conclusion, uh, final thoughts. Every teacher and context is unique. This is very important in reflective practice. Reflection is a dynamic process. It's not stationary. It moves, it changes, it evolves. The CAM offers a space and time for teachers to reflect, to dialogue, to exchange, to question, and to plan for future actions. The CAM gives the opportunity to gather as a community of practice. It also, um, reflective practice supports and enhances teaching practices to improve and better practices. 
the bottom-up professional development is meaningful for teachers because they work from real problems and real situations in their context and professionals can find their own solution sharing with others uh, asking uh, asking and answering questions to be able to uh, come to uh, improvement and adjustment in their practices so thank you very much for uh, your attention and if you'd like to uh, write to me this is my email and references thank you all and have a great day